What's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of Carpeting the Front Deck here on SMG Fishing. I hope you guys are as excited to see this project turn out as I am. Before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to point out that most of the products that I have been purchasing have been purchased on Amazon.com. So if you guys would like to help support this channel and you also happen to need those products that I've been using, those links are down in the description below. Alright guys, check out this video. Okay guys, so a couple days have gone by now and I've flipped over all that wood and painted again on the other side. I'm only doing one layer of paint because I really don't think that you need tons of layers of paint on here. So what I've done is I've laid out these three pieces. I've put braces on them so that I can flip this over. Once I take this off and flip it over, I'm going to put more braces on the other side so then I can flip it back over, remove these braces, and then we're going to carpet. Hopefully it'll work. All right, so now I've got more supports and what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw these in on this side, which is the bottom side, and then I'm going to flip it over and pull out the other ones. All right, so for carpet installation, you're gonna need a few things. First of all, you need some good carpet glue. And I got a nice razor blade and a bunch of extra razors. Next, you're gonna need a notch trowel to actually spread the carpet adhesive. So I've got this really long roll of outdoor carpet from Home Depot, I think. It might have been Lowe's. You wanna give yourself plenty of room to be able to tuck that carpet under and be able to put a staple in it. All right, so now I'm gonna cut off the majority of what I need. All right, so now that we have our carpet upside down and our deck is now right side up, so I mean this is the piece that the carpet is gonna be on, we're just gonna go ahead and throw down some glue. So. All right, so you wanna give this glue a second to tack up really good before you put it on top of your carpet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over. All right guys, I just wanna reiterate a point real quick that I am by no means a professional, or do I ever claim to know what I'm doing. This whole thing could have gone a lot smoother, but it did not. All right, so I'm gonna start right here in the center first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out and then wrap it over as tight as I can possibly get it. And while I'm holding it there, so once you have one in the middle, you can go about six to 10 inches left, do the same thing. All right, and now that I have a staple about every six to 10 inches, I'm gonna go and fill in the holes and I'm pretty much gonna put these like an inch apart. I really don't want this carpet to come off. All right, so now that we have that one side done, we are gonna flip it over again. And this whole time I'm trying to be really careful so that I don't move these side pieces or break them off. Okay, so now the fun part. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take this rolling pin and we're gonna roll out this carpet. So the reason why I did that one side first was so that we can take all that stuff that's stapled in at the top and we can stretch the carpet down to the back. So we're gonna use that rolling pin to do that. I'm gonna start here and we'll work my way that way. Okay, so now that we've rolled everything out and got it as flat and get all those air bubbles out of it and try to tighten it up just a little bit, we're gonna flip it back over and we're gonna keep stapling. All right guys, so I'm running into another issue. One, I can't get the carpet around that side because the support is still in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I have a leftover piece of aluminum sheeting from when I cut out the trolley motor box. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here and then I'm gonna drill holes and I'm gonna put rivets through the wood. So that way it'll be pretty thin and then I won't have to worry about it being unlevel on the frame. All right, so is that gonna be strong enough to be able to keep it from bending? No, absolutely not. But it'll give me a little bit of peace of mind moving it on and off a boat constantly while I'm still building this project. I don't expect this to hold up any kind of strength at all. It's a very flimsy piece of aluminum. All right, now that I got that taken care of, I should be able to carpet everything around that. Guys, this thing looks awesome. Check it out. Everything's nice and seamless. It's all holding together. It's it still fits even after I put all that carpet on there. All right guys, so I ran out of carpet glue, so I went and bought a gallon jug of it. I hope that's enough. I, uh, I did one and I completely had it done and then I realized that I carpeted the wrong side. Okay, so here's what's going on. I got my wood, I got my glue over there, got my stapler, I got my carpet. This side up, I even have it written right there. Can't see it very well because I painted over it, but it says up right here and I still put it on the wrong side. I got to figure it out now. We put the glue on the top side and then we staple the bottom side. All right, so when you get your glue, if it looks like that, you might want to stir it. Just take a handful, drop it down, and rub it around. This is the most effective way I can get to, to spread it. You were given hands for a reason. It's the best tool you'll ever own. You might as well use it. Spread it along the edges, get those sides all glued up. And I really want to cover these areas where the hinges are going to be because there's not going to be able to hold a staple in that. 
So you remember how I just told you guys that I glued the wrong side? I ended up using the same piece of wood. Luckily, it didn't dry yet, but I was able to pull the carpet off. You ever gotten gum stuck somewhere, like on your mouth or something, because you blew a bubble too big? You just take the rest of the gum out, right? And you like dab it around and it gets all the gum off? Well, that's what I did with the glue. Here's what is left of the carpet glue is this ball. It's extremely tacky. It sticks to everything, but it was the only way I was able to get the glue off. All right, switch out your gloves. And you want to grab your carpet trail. And you just want to make marks on it. Now we're going to let it sit for a little while and let it get tacky. If you flip it over right now, it's just going to mush all over the place. But if you let it sit for a second, it'll get all tacky and then you can flip it over and you'll be good. Okay, now that we've waited a little while, we're going to go ahead and flip it over. All right, now we're gonna take and staple just one side. Push down on my board. I'm gonna pull up and out with my carpet. Up, out, and then roll it around. And then hold that pressure and give it a staple. Okay, now that we have that one side done, we're gonna roll that carpet and flip it over. You want it to lay flat. So we're gonna get some flour and coat up your rolling pin. No, I'm just kidding, you don't need flour. We're not baking. So we're just gonna take and work from the center right here in the middle where we put that first staple and we're gonna kind of fan out this way. Start right here and we're gonna roll out. Once you roll out, you don't wanna come back with it because you're gonna pull that carpet back this way when we're trying to stretch it away from there. You don't need to roll it with the handles. That's not gonna really help anything, but if you just take it and push it, that way you're actually stretching the carpet. And you don't wanna pick up that carpet because you've already rolled everything down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this top lip over and I'm gonna pick it up like that. That way you don't pull a carpet. I'm actually gonna rotate it. And you do the same thing. Start in the center, pull up and back, and staple. So now we have these two holes that we're worrying about. So I don't wanna staple along the edge where these holes are. I want to go on either side, and I might even come one staple up this way. So if you ever get any staples that don't actually go in the wood all the way and they're just kind of sitting on top of the carpet, Make sure you pluck those out and restaple that because you don't want those staples falling out. Like that one didn't go in all the way, so I'm going to pull it out. Shoot a little flathead screwdriver. Now that I've got my carpet stapled every six to 10 inches on either side, the two opposite sides of each other, I'm not worried about these sides yet. Now that I've got these two sides stapled, I'm gonna go and finish them off. Basically what I do is I have a staple here and a staple here. I'm gonna start with one in the middle and then I'm gonna split those middles. I'm gonna put one in each of those middles and then from there I'll go in the middle of those ones. Just keep going and splitting the difference until you get the entire thing lined up with staples. All right, so you don't necessarily need to have staples lined up touching each other the entire way down your carpet, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I feel like it's not hurting anything and I've got the staples. Where are my staples? I've got plenty of staples, so I'm not worried about it. Just gonna staple away. I had some really cool plans for this boat and I had it all lined up and then it was just, it was bad. I'm angry about it. I was trolling Craigslist and I found a guy who was selling a 25 horsepower motor out of a 2005 Bass Tracker. The reason he was selling it was because he was gonna take his outboard motor and make it into an electric outboard boat. He had a 25 horsepower motor and he was selling it and it included all the controls and everything. And in the post he said, if you would like to buy the console, we can talk about a price on that too. So I emailed him, of course, and I was like, hey, I'm not really interested in your outboard motor, but I would really like to offer you money for your console. And usually I'll lowball people, but I didn't. I was like, hey, what do you want for your console? If you still got it, I'd love to have it. He was about an hour and a half south, and I worked during the week. I worked a full-time job, so I couldn't just drop what I was doing right then and there and go up there and pick it up. So I told him, I was like, hey, I'm off this day through this day. When would you like me to come pick it up? I'm pretty much available all day long whenever you need me. And he was like, uh, yeah, those days will work. Just let me know when you're coming down. I was like, awesome. Thank you very much. I will be in contact with you. So today I'm getting ready and I hop in my truck. I email him and I'm like, hey, what's your address? I'm on my way to pick it up. We had already agreed on a price and everything. He said, it's yours. Come and get it whenever you want. And he even said that it's not a big deal. It's just sitting in his garage. He didn't plan on selling it, but he also didn't plan on using it or anything so I was about an hour and a half down the road on my way to pick it up he emailed me back and told me oh sorry or he didn't even say sorry he emailed me back and said all right you sold it what do you mean you already sold it yeah you already sold it you sold it to me we had an agreement that said I was gonna give you a certain amount of money and you were gonna give me the console 
So anyway, I know I've told a couple of y'all out there that it was going to be on the boat, but it's not going to happen anymore because some people are just, anyway, here's some pictures of it. It would have looked really cool. Second, second note. If you guys or one of your friends or family members have an old bass tracker laying around that has a really nice fiberglass topped center console that you want to sell me and it's in my general area, I would love to come pick it up for a decent price. So if you got something that looks better than this, send me an email over at smgfishing at gmail.com or you can just direct message me over at Instagram or Twitter. Head on over there and check out my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter. They're all updated pretty much uh, whenever I'm working on my boat. So if you guys want to see the stuff that I'm working on before I actually put the video out, like these boat hatches, if you're watching this, you would have seen them like a week before, maybe even two. Oh, flipped it over and now we're going to keep stapling. So when you come to a corner, what you want to do is go ahead and turn the excess going that way and then pop it up so that folds back. Basically you're just trying to get to that corner and you don't want to staple too close to the corner. And basically what you want to do is go to the corner of the wood and just split it in half. Go at a 45 degree angle, come straight back. And then once you get to that corner, you just want to go straight down, cut it flat. And now we staple the other sides. Oops. This is why you buy lots of razor blades. Look at this cool thing I bought. Have lots because they don't really go dull, but you break the tips off when you're cutting carpet like that. It's pretty good. All the hardware still fits in here. Remember when you're putting these hinges on, don't over tighten them too much because you don't want to strip them out. Okay, I'm doing this not because I want to, but by popular demand. And because I value you guys' comments out there. So I think if I take that and do that, I'm just going to use the same technique I was using earlier. I'm just going to take these rivets like I did earlier and attach them. All right, guys, well, there you have it. We got it all done. We got it carpeted. And uh, so, yeah, there's this gap right here we got to fill in, and then there's no gap over here, so we got to. We gotta adjust things. We have minimal adjustments we gotta do, but hey, I think it looks great. Let's take a look at that for a second. So next thing we're gonna have to do is pour slam latches for these things and install those and figure out some way to attach the deck to the actual frame itself. I'm thinking some kind of latch or something underneath. I haven't fully thought it out yet. I want it to be able to come off fairly easily. I don't want it to, you know, like fly off going down the road, but I want to be able to get underneath it if I have to. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you go down there and hit that thumbs up button. If you have any comments or questions about what we did today, make sure you go leave those down in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.